Afternoon, I'm KHU 11 meteorologist Kim Castro based out of Houston, Texas. We've got a tropical update for you on this Monday, July 1st. It's just after 1 p.m. and major category four hurricane barrel is just shy of category five strength. This is the strongest barrel has been so far. Here's a live look at satellite sustained winds 150 miles an hour. Those gusts at 165. If barrel jumps up to 157 miles an hour, it becomes a category five hurricane for context the earliest cat five on record july 11th with hurricane emily in 2005 so this is a very early season strong major hurricane it's made landfall in the windward islands it barely lost a little bit of steam as it crossed over granted this is not a very big landmass to have any interruption but you'll notice the eye became a little bit wobbly now though the eye very well defined this system is a strong one and it'll be strong for the next few hours it is forecasted to start to weaken but as of right now it is uh, packing a huge punch and it's certainly bringing about some major impacts to the windward islands notice the main outer wall now exiting the windward islands but these areas hit on the right side of the hurricane get the most impacts the right side of uh, the right quadrant, right front and right rear have the strongest wind, life-threatening wind, storm surge, flooding, and the likelihood of some embedded tornadoes. So even though the storm has passed, there are still tropical storm warnings up for now. As barrel continues, its trek along the Caribbean. We're already keeping a watchful eye on a couple different areas. Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, Haiti under a tropical storm watch. And then notice Jamaica under a hurricane watch. They're expecting a second landfall as we go into the middle of the week. So here's the latest track for barrel. Like I mentioned, still a very strong category four hurricane expected to remain under at least that strength, if not jumping up a little bit more as we head into the next few hours into this evening and early tomorrow morning. By Tuesday afternoon, It'll drop down to a Category 3 hurricane. That's what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting. And it, it's going to track south of Puerto Rico. It's going to track south of Cuba. However, it's expected to go right over Jamaica sometime Wednesday, late morning, early afternoon as a Category 2 hurricane. After that land interaction and after some wind shear, the storm will continue to weaken, becoming a Category 1 hurricane by Thursday morning. And then as it makes its way towards the Yucatan, it could make landfall a third time now as a Category 1 hurricane. So that is another update. It's expected to maintain its hurricane strength as it goes into the Yucatan, potentially uh, keeping some composure as a tropical storm uh, as it tries to push into the Gulf. Now that exact track or that exact intensity is still a long ways away that we'll have to keep an eye on. Notice that we're looking ahead now towards this coming weekend. So that's going to be something to keep tabs on, but still three separate landfalls potentially with um, this major hurricane barrel. So the first one for the Windward Islands, which we already saw earlier today, the second one for Jamaica, which is expected by the middle of the week. And then a third one for the Yucatan, uh, Cancun in that cone of uncertainty there for uh, later on this week, Friday morning is where we could see impact in the Yucatan. So far, Barrel has had a lot of upper level support. There hasn't been any wind shear to disrupt this system. However, as we go into the next few days, as it tracks in the Caribbean, that's going to change and that's why it'll slowly start to lose at least some of its strength. Let me take you through the next couple of days as it goes uh, into the territory of Jamaica. You'll notice now it's on top of some of that wind shear. So what'll happen in the Caribbean, surface winds are gonna start to squeeze, upper level winds are gonna be pulling away. And so those two winds combating against the storm Will hopefully help pull it apart a little bit, weaken it as it continues to move through the Caribbean. And then once it passes through the Yucatan, it perhaps won't resurface in the Gulf. That's what we're hoping for. However, 
um, with the latest track from the National Hurricane Center anticipating this maintaining its Category 1 strength as it gets to the Yucatan could hint at the potential of at least some sort of disruption in the Gulf, some remnants of barrel. Tropical storm impacts already felt for the Windward Islands. Tropical storm impacts low for um, Haiti, for the Dominican Republic, high for Jamaica. So anywhere between 70 to 80 percent. And then tropical storm wind impacts uh, in the moderate range for Belize, for uh, the Yucatan, for uh, Veracruz as we head into this weekend. So this is going to be something that we'll monitor for several more days. Now the positioning of barrel right now for the continental U.S. and any if we see any impacts would be a few days out six to eight. So we still have through this weekend to watch the forecast closely to see if we get any impacts from barrel crossing over into the Gulf. Right now, the way the cone is, is pushing, it looks like the impacts will be felt uh, for Tampico again, a third time. So we had Alberto impact uh, Tampico, the coastline of Mexico from Tampico to Veracruz. We had Chris, Tropical Storm Chris, that's impacted Tampico and now potentially the last push of barrel could be moving in that direction too. Notice. Lots can happen within the next six to eight days. So that's why I advise you during hurricane season to at least watch the forecast once a day, whether that's the morning, afternoon, or evening, to get any updates on the intensity of barrel, the track, any shifts in the cone, any shifts of the impacts. If this pushes even a little bit further north, could we see any impacts to the coastline as far as um, any higher rib currents or any storm surge, any anything like that is going to be something that we'll monitor here in-house for the next six to eight days and then you can be updated on that on a regular basis too. That being said, this is a very early start to hurricane season. I mean a category four major hurricane that formed in June and now we're July 1st. It's the strongest it's ever been and so for that reason, it this is the week because we've got the 68 days to get your preparations in. So start thinking about the supplies that you need to have in hand, like food and water, any sort of medications you might need. It's a good time to do that now while we have this anticipation because there are gonna be several of these storms that we watch over the next uh, two to seven days. Batteries, phone chargers, having cash on hand, making sure that your car has a full tank of gas. And then if you live along the coastline or maybe you have a vacation home, say in Galveston or Jamaica Beach, maybe you like to go to Surfside, uh, try to think ahead as to if we are to see any watches or any warnings issued for the continental U.S., whether with barrel or whether with another system, what would you do? So uh, try to understand what your immediate risks are if you do have property along the coastline, strengthen the home, and then make sure you're checking that insurance policy. Like I said, the month of June and now the start of July should historically be a very quiet season. Uh, peak of hurricane season is September 10th, so this is a very early start. Uh, I'll continue to watch Barrel throughout the day. I'm going to be posting an update too on our social media pages in English and in Spanish. Uh, so be sure to catch that either on X, Twitter, on Instagram, or on Facebook. But for now, please get those preparations ready, and I'll be back at the 4 o'clock uh, newscast to give you an update on Barrel.